Hello everyone, I apologize for that interruption. My video stopped recording when I accidentally clicked my mouse, and we're going to continue from here. We had just written 4 over 1 divided by 3 halves, right? We had just written that. We want to do 4 divided by 3 halves, right? I'm going to use KFC, keep flip change, to do 4 over 1 times 2 over 3, right? 2 over 3. I do keep flip change. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 3 is 3. So I get 8 thirds. So x equals 8 over 3. Or 3 goes into 8 twice with 2 left over. 2 and 2 thirds cups rice. So if I'm in the kitchen, I need to add 2 and 2 thirds cups of rice to my vegetable stock to make my rice, right? I need two and two thirds cups of rice. Notice that one was a little bit different. We had a relationship that we needed to address, rice to liquid. And then we used the known value of liquid to find the unknown value of the rice. Now, let's look at our seventh example. Over a six hour period, a basketball player spent twice as much time, so twice as much time, lifting weights as she did practicing free throws, and two hours longer, so two hours longer, watching past games than practicing free throws. How many hours did she spend on each task? So I have a six-hour period, so the total time she spent was six hours, right? And then I have some unknowns. What did she do during those six hours? Well, she did weights, free throws, and past games. Right? She lifted weights, she practiced free throws, and she watched past games. I have three unknowns. Just like with the board example, just like with the wooden project example, I want to make sure I'm using the unknown that is referenced twice as my variable. Spent twice as much time lifting weights as practicing free throws. And, remember, and breaks the sentence up. Two hours longer watching past games than practicing free throws. Free throws showed up twice. So free throws will be my variable. Maybe I choose X. Or maybe you choose T for throw. Or maybe F for free, right? You can choose what letter you like. Now, I need to represent weights and games in terms of X. Let's see. Twice as much time lifting as doing free throws. Twice as much. 2X. And then two hours longer on past games than free throws. Two hours longer would be X plus two, right? If I want to go two hours longer, I need to add two. So I have twice as long and two hours longer for my other two activities. So now I've expressed everything in my variables. I need to use the part that says the total. Well, if I add 2X plus X plus X plus two, that should give me the total, right? If I add the three values together, weights, free throws, and past games, I should get the total time. Once again, these parentheses were not needed. Sometimes they will be, though, so it's always good to put them in to keep yourself organized. But let's take a look here. 2x plus x plus x. Well, that's 4x, right? And then plus 2 equals 6. Well, I got to get this plus 2 out of there to balance, right? 4x equals 6. Take away 2 is 4. Let's see, I'll divide by 4, x equals, divide by 4, x equals 1. So for free throws, I spent one hour. One hour on free throws. Let's see, twice as long. Twice as long as one hour would be two hours on weights. And one plus two would be three hours on past games, correct? Oops, sorry, I was a little off screen there. I sometimes bleed off the screen. One hour on free throws, right? Two hours on weights, and three hours on past games. Those are the values we want for our answer. So let's box them up. 
and we know they make sense because what do they add up to? 1 plus 2 plus 3 is indeed 6 hours total, right? And they match the relationships. Twice as much time on weights and 2 hours longer on past games than free throws, right? So I can answer questions with multiple unknowns. I just need to express everything in terms of the same variable. Now, we have one more example. One last example. It says, at a math club meeting, each member brought two non-members as guests. So, each member brought two non-members as guests. If a total of 27 people attended the meeting, how many members were in attendance? Well, I've got members, non-members, and the total. Right? Those are the three things I either know or don't know. I know the total was 27. I don't know how many members or non-members were there, though. But I know that for every member, there were two non-members. So, I'm going to let M be my members. Then, if each member brought two guests, there would be twice as many non-members, right? For each member, there was two guests. Each member brought two non-members, right? And now I'm ready to look at the members plus the non-members should give me the total people in attendance, right? Well, members plus non-members gives me M plus 2M is 3M equals 27. And then we'll divide by 3 to find that M is equal to 9. So there were nine members. Nine members at the meeting. Nine members, right? M is members, so I know there was nine members. It doesn't ask about non-members, so I'm not going to talk about non-members. If it did, though, I would need to plug in here to find that there were 18 non-members, right? And that is our last example. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time.